YouTube, how's it going everybody? So today we're doing a brand new video. We're doing something a bit different. We're gonna do a tutorial video for all the new or beginner cane players. We're gonna be going over everything. First things first, I just wanna mention the reasons why you wanna look to play Kane. See, now Kane is a very, very, very strong champion that excels extremely well with solo carrying. He's very, 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 um, what's the word, diverse. He has so many different team comps and play styles he can fit into strictly because of his forms so a lot of people are probably wondering when to go which form well if they have a four range which is just this comp just this specific if they have a lot of range you normally want to go blue now if they have three people you can at least one shot that's the huge indicator that you go blue overall if they don't have three people that you can one shot then you want to go red yo my boy daniel thanks so much to twitch prime appreciate it so much welcome to best king club by the way guys i stream every day on twitch if you haven't already be sure to go check it out twitch tv cares my well my boys they have three people I can one shot. Easy one shot, easy one shot, easy one shot, maybe one shot. This is actually one of the hardest counters to Kane. Now, the main counters to Kane, Kindred, Udir, Nidalee, Graves. Champions that can farm really fast, be very impactful on the map, and still have a lot of in game uh, team fight presence. What's with the music? The music is no copyright sounds. Don't worry, boys. Thanks for the alert. Sorry, my Twitch chat's freaking out over this. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to start bot side. Now leash and let them push the now this is a very good pathing that i like to do into getting my form early as possible i think i've mentioned this in a previous video this is very very good pathing see i have like six different paths people are like karis my didn't you upload a video on this path thing not so long ago why are you doing this other path well there, you always want to have a lot of different paths because obviously i'm a challenger jungler so to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over it doesn't you know it doesn't really uh, work out because they're just going to know what you're going to do and they're going to counter it so this is a good path like i said um it's very good for ganking bot early and getting a bunch of orbs now i'll just go over everything now since i'm going blue and i know this i'm gonna build my favorite items to build on blue cane is dust blade into an edge of night and then if they have a tank i'll get last whisper if not i'll get ga and then last item, you know, you either get Yumu's or Last Whisper. Those items are very important. So, this is how that your first pathing is going to go if they have a double range bot and you're on this side of the map starting. Uh, let's see. All we have to do is go aggro here. Okay, she missed her thing. Wait for her to flash. Karma with the beautiful plays. Stand still. Karma with a beautiful kill. And let's look at how many orbs this gets us, boys. And we have to run straight up top because they might choose us. See, I didn't get any vision on my tops on my blue, which I should have asked for. Normally, you want to ask your laners, yo, can you can you give me a ward right here, my boy? And then they'll say, nah, you suck. I hate you. And then you'll be like, oh, okay. But, okay. I'm going to start off with a long sword. See, I usually like to get long swords. See, okay, I get smite. I start off with smite. I mean, I don't have enough for smite. So, if you don't have enough for smite, you always get long sword. But... A lot of people ask, oh, when do you go two long swords and when do you get smite? Well, you get two long swords when your team has CC. You get smite when your team doesn't have CC. Oh, a $5 donation. Thank you, sir. What is up? Watch. Cutest cane main gnaw. Thank you. Watch. Watch, 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 watch. Five, four, three. Aye! Got her flash, nice. Very good. Patience is a good virtue, my friends. Now we get the scuttle, farm my top side. I could get the bot scuttle too, but I really want to get my own top side camp so they respawn faster. See now, one of the hugest ways of playing Kane is how you path. That's one of the main importances. You're not stronger than any other jungler early on. So a lot of times, boys, you're gonna get out jungled. But see, I knew I could fight Kindred there because she was low and I had an early reset to get a long sword. So knowing when you can take fights is very important. Your limitations. My first 50 games of Kane, I had a 30% win rate, boys. So if you're if you're struggling with Kane when you first start him out, don't feel bad about it. Don't feel bad. Listen, if you enjoy the champion and you have fun, just keep playing them. You'll learn. It's all about understanding pathing and limitations. So, obviously, if you need help with any of that, you can always check out my stream, Twitch TV Charismy, or my YouTube videos, like you're doing right now if you're watching this video. Um, and I'm always happy to help. If you guys ever have any specific questions, you can try and ask me. I'll always try and answer. Uh, let's see. Like I said, I'm just going to farm here. Kane's excels at pathing fast, so... 
your pathing is very crucial towards taking the right fights because you kind of get to pick and choose whatever you want to do because of how fast paced you are. And if you're wondering why Kindred counters, I didn't really go over fully this matchup. Um, she has her Q up really often, which is very good for dodging your W. And she can kite out Ross. Ross gets really countered by champs that can kite him out. And then Blue Kane gets really countered by, you know, champs that, well, I mean, her R. Her R is just all I need to say, nothing else really. So. Um, so, I'm just farming all these camps, no issue. I'll probably get a blue smite, longsword. I right, also, if you're wondering wh why I went these runes, well, see, I can kind of, oh, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. Okay, see, I can kind of one-shot them all, but at the same time, I can't. So, these runes are kind of just for more sustain and fights, so I can get multiple combos off, as opposed to just one. If you can, like, straight up, like, if they got no peel, no nothing, no survivability at all, because... Then you go Inspiration Secondary. If they got a little bit, you know, might want to get Ravenous Hunter and, um, you know, uh, Precision Secondary afterwards. And if they have a lot of AP, I get Sorcery with um, Nullifying Orb and Absolute Focus. Let's see, is there anything I haven't gone over? Oh, yes, the Maxing Order. Okay, so a lot of people ask me this as well. Why Why do I put 3 and Q at Max W? Well, for, for your first form, your Q is your by far your most important ability for clearing, fights, everything. Um, w is personally my favorite ability for the second form on both forms so it's just very 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 strong there you go baby all right sweet got her flash and got the kill i don't know why she's rushing with sand that's kind of weird all right that's good probably gonna get my boots now just so i can be more fast around the map but yeah that's pretty much why i do this i do this every game so three and q max your w and then afterwards you can either max your Q or E after, I mean, it just depends, but whatever you want to do. You don't have to copy that. If you want to max Q all the way, go for it. If you want to max W all the way, I might look at you funny, but you can go for it. If you want to max E, well then, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, wait, the save. Remember, here's something you want to remember. You will always be behind until you get your form. So if I'm ahead and I don't have my form yet, that means the game's pretty much over. So, play, learning how to play from behind is very important. And the simple way of doing it is just farming safely and kind of taking the fights you know you could take and win. So, this is kind of risky right here. See, look. Easy access to dodge my W. Beats me up. I can't really get on top of her, but when I get my blue form, it, the matchup gets a little bit easier, but the thing is, is that... When you're against a counter matchup, it doesn't mean, oh, let me go fight them over and over. Let me go fight their jungler. Like, people would be like, wait, Karis, my, isn't Blue K not good no Irelia? Well, am I going to be focusing the Irelia all game? No. If I'm fighting Irelia, Shen's going to be fighting her too, so it's 2v1. She can't live 2v1. That's just logic. A lot of people, they overthink stuff. They think people are going to play, like, perfectly. Like, oh, man, she's going to, like, hit her W and she's going to R U and E U. And it's like, if she hits all that, that means I suck. Of course she's gonna kill me. It makes sense. <laughs> that's that's logic. All right, now let's see. I'm kind of resetting a lot here because I'm not really in a comfortable spot at all this game because I've just been like kind of forced to reset. But I really want to kind of trade one for one for my form. Ganking a Heimer is a big no-no. Darius, Heimer, or Lowey, the three champs you never really gank. Um, but I'm feeling very confident in myself, you know. I had a big breakfast this morning. I'm feeling really... Uh, Feeling really good here. I'm gonna get a good spot. See, now the way you gank is how you path. Because you don't obviously have the damage, so. And alley oop. And then I walk out this way in case they're waiting in the jungle because they might kill me. And we got our blue form, nine minutes in. Now, let me explain something to you. I don't have to deal with this this game, but other games. Let's say I wanted my red form. I could lower the CD time of my red form by hitting melees so irelia let's say if i want to go red if i hit irelia every hit is five seconds off my timer so you don't have to wait the full four minutes if you are fighting a lot of melees and if i wanted to go red this game i would wait it out because it's not really that bad to wait out that extra four minutes it's not ideal but because usually the way you path you path towards fighting people that give you your form you know you always do that always sometimes you might have to take like you know you might have to take a detour or something. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, uh, they had no clue. All right, now we go top. See, the art of how to carry when you're getting your form, proactive. Be active. Be ready to put in work across the map. Be everywhere. Do it up. Since this lane's kind of shoved, let me make sure it gets a full-on shove. So, items, like I said, my favorite items to get. If you're really ahead, you can get a Yumu's. If you're eh, kind of ahead, um, you can, I, I'd say just get a Genite most of the time. Oh, this is that one suck song. There's some weird suck song in this playlist. Okay. Her red was up. See, I don't really want to go there to fight her because I actually can't fight her or kill her unless I have my R. You're not really okay the way that you want to take your fights as blue cane when you get your form is if you don't have dust blade you either wait for your r or you wait for your teammate so if it's like a 2v1 sure if it's not no but if my r is up because a long long time ago they buffed the heck yep i said heck out of your r where you could do so much damage and it was like the only thing that made blue cane kind of playable because he was just so weak in every way so that one little r buff just made the world a much better place Jinkies. It appears there is three in our jungle. Okay, I'm gonna try and reset here and get a little item. Normally I don't like to get my Moby boots until um what do we call it? Until after I get my dust blade, but I'm just gonna get it this game because I'm so ahead that I already have a lot of damage, so I don't really have to worry about like all the other stuff. I don't know why I slowed him and not me. That's weird. Oh yeah, by the way, a lot of people don't know this. Your E, when you upgrade, it does. it's immune to slows, so. And when you upgrade your form, your E is lowered. The CD time is lowered all the way down to eight seconds. And you can lower it even more with CD, so that's why it's six seconds. That's a huge reason why people play Blueken as well. Your R damage and your E CD time. Two most important things. I was just fighting a tower. I was like, what the, where's the dragon? You always buy Moby's on blue can. If I have an all AD comp, I usually get Sork Boots because a lot of people see. Oh, a lot of you may have seen uh, Kane on your team with Sork Boots, and you're like, wait, why do they do that? Your passive actually does 27% bonus magic damage for the first three seconds of combat, so that's really huge. And getting uh, magic, getting that Sork Boots kind of amplifies the magic damage. See, Moby's are just so OP on assassins though, so I never really get it unless my team's all AD. And then also your R resets your passive so it's like six seconds of combat so you're the first three seconds alt get it back combo again another three seconds huge right now I'm just kind of farming I have my R so I can kind of look for a play playing off ganking Shen would be free because look at her it's, she has tabby but she's pretty squishy regardless like 1v2 we can kill her easily um, but I kind of don't want to fight anywhere near Kindred because she's pretty big. And like I said, she's pretty big counter as well. And she's got Red Smite Tabby, which is, is very counter towards Assassins. Let's see, is there anything I'm forgetting? I think I have everything noted down so far. Build, path. Uh... That's the only thing you can do against Kindred, by the way. If you can combo her and get her R, see, now, okay, here's something that a lot of people don't know. If you don't damage her until she gets into her R, it doesn't count as damage. So if you try and R her, it, it won't work. When, if she, the only time you damaged her was in her R, wait, this guy didn't even move. Expect him to, like, move. It's like... That W miss was not my fault. People always want to flame me per W I missed. But a lot of times, okay, listen. I have 70 ping as a challenger player. I don't throw skill shots as like a reaction. I do it as like a prediction. I try and predict where they go. Especially since Kane's W has like a one second wind up time. It's kind of hard to react. In challenger, I play a little bit different. Like this is like mid to high diamond. So it's nothing like, you know, too low elo. All right, so. All right, also you may have noticed, I don't really go for objectives when I play blue can as much. I'll do it if my team wants to, but more often than not, you just want to get as many kills and as much gold in the map as you can, because you fall off really hard. If the game goes past 30 minutes and you're playing blue can, you did something wrong, my boys. That's all I can say. 
I messed up there. I kind of misclicked. I meant to auto her, but then I clicked like right behind her. Sorry, it's like my first game of the day. I got her flash in R though. It's pretty good. She actually thought I was going to win that. Sweets. Look at how OP your E is, boys. See, that, this is why I ran the sustain runes. Does it look like I can one-shot them? Heck no. But I still wanted to go blue here. I still wanted to go blue here. Because Ross isn't... People have this mindset. Ross is just better to go every game, isn't he? No. If you get, if they have a lot of kite, you'll see. Like, okay, look at their team. They have a lot of mobility and a lot of kite. Ross would get destroyed here. So, to go blue, but a little bit more, like, a little bit smarter in your build. You know, are your runes at least. Very, very important. So getting those multiple combos off in the fight with this Sassani runes really kept me alive there. Very crucial. Um, so, like I said, if I'm really ahead, I'll usually get uh, U moves. If I'm like not really ahead, I'll go Edge of Night. Um, into their comp though, I'll probably still get Edge of Night just because they have so much to stop my initiation, like Heimer stun, Sona stun, like. So all this stuff I can't really dodge, you know. Like if you can, if you can predict Sona R, you could dodge it. But if she just like launches it at me and like gets lucky, I, I could get destroyed. You know. <laughs> all right, let's see. If you're wondering why I get blue orb, by the way, uh, sweeper doesn't really do much because you're not really sitting around in bushes. You're always using your E, and then um, what's the other one? Trinket. I mean, I don't know. I just like blue orb because when you're using your E, you can kind of scout out. Like, let's say I had a blue orb, I can use it right there. You're like, oh, that's where they are. There you go. I didn't want to get too close to him because he would have obliterated me. Oh. Oh, she leveled one HP. I don't think I have much trolling. I think I just one shot him. <laughs> Ole. This guy's really confident in himself. That's not bad. I think this guy forgets that my E heals me. Yeah, look at his build. He built like just to survive me. So that's the funny thing, is that since he built like this, he doesn't really do much damage. So he's just so weak and useless. Instead of like being like a huge threat in the carry. It's kind of just like, he, he just built to counter me. He didn't really build to do anything productive. Which people will do a lot. If you're wondering why I didn't R there early, because I knew she had her R, so I didn't want to hold it, because she was just holding her R for my R. And that's that's why she literally saved until like last hit. All right, let's see. Now we get the edge tonight. I might as well get Ocean here because I got nothing else to do. <laughs> Ocean's not bad on Blue Cannon at all. If anything, it's actually pretty good. Because you're constantly using your E. By the way, I usually tend to take all the blue buffs. But yeah, that's pretty much how you win the game. You just keep making picks and keep going to their jungle and fighting them. And then you get objectives with your team eventually. Like, okay, I'm going to make a pick. Then we can go do Baron, boys. So, I'm just going to go in. Make a pick. Get tower. Always make sure you're taking something after a pick, because I notice a lot of times in low reloads, you'd be like, oh, let me get, uh, you know, let me get a kill here, and um, let me just reset. It's like, no, you should be looking, 
you always want to maximize what you can get, but you don't want to be too greedy at the same time. That's like a huge thing of being like climbing to high elo, knowing how much you could take without getting punished. So like, mechanics isn't everything, boys. Sometimes making the huge play don't mean much if you. Go in, Shen. Nah, I got so slow. <laughs> Penta time? Go, go. Oh, no. I was going for it. I could have killed her, but then I would have died to Heimer. I don't want to give 1k gold to Heimer. Even though he's 1 in 7. You never want to give shutdowns. That's a huge way of throwing the game up, boys. Huge way. Don't be greedy. I learned this the hard way. Smart and calculated. Calculated and aggression. Oh, we could have taken that. He autoed it. We could still take it. Alright, well, there's your tutorial Blue Cane game. If I haven't answered any questions, feel free to ask them down below. I'll do a tutorial Ross game as well. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and a sub. Peace out, YouTube.